Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? Uh, is everyone adjusting to the uh, fluctuation in the temperature? It's going to fluctuate at big time on Tuesday. It's 13 degrees. Yeah. Either just kick the light off or. Yeah, it's plugged in. I accidentally kicked it. Well, welcome everyone as we gather for worship this morning. It is great to be able to come together in the warmth of God's love to experience God's grace and faithfulness. So as we gather today, let us remember the congregation of St. James and St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Gravel Hill in our prayers this week. As we have begun the journey through Lent, let us join together in the Lenten liturgy. On this Sunday, of, on the second Sunday of Lent, we hear Jesus teaching about the suffering and rejection that he would endure on his way to the cross. Like Peter, we resist this teaching. We prefer an easier way without struggle and suffering. But Jesus does not hold back. He tells us that, he, that to become his followers, we need to deny ourselves and take up our cross. May God help us as we learn more about it. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord Jesus, your light shines for all to see. We look to your light for guidance in our everyday lives. Lead us in your paths of righteousness. We want to live and worship in your righteousness, shining your light of love and grace for all to see. Amen. Oh uh-huh. 
for the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Wonderful God, we come into the light of your love, hearing your voice, speaking through your holy words. We experience the movement of your Holy Spirit each day as we live in the wonderful world that you created. Your works are evident in every corner, every plant, and every creature. Your light helps us to see how life works together and interacts with each other. We are humbled to realize that we are part of such a detailed and extravagant, extravagant creation. We are also humbled, humbled when we walk in your light and see our sins clearly as, you, as, as they are seen by you. Though we might try to hide, there is nowhere we can hide, go to hide the dirt that stains our souls. Lord, we struggle to confess our sins because we are afraid of our identity being tarnished. We are afraid to lose respect. We are afraid of how others will treat us. We are afraid we are not the people we think that we are. We too easily forget about your grace. We forget that without this confessing our sins and seeking your forgiveness and grace, we cannot come to you in worship. Lord, we confess we have sinned against you and against those we love. We confess we have sinned in our thoughts, our words, and our actions. Forgive us, we pray. We lift this prayer up to you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Friends, Jesus hears our prayers and knows our hearts. We cannot hide anything from him. He sees our sins and still invites us to receive his grace and forgiveness. As Jesus said to the Apostle Paul, oh, to, you are being sent to open their eyes so they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. Then they will receive forgiveness for their sins and will be given a place among God's people who are set apart by faith in me. You can find this in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, verse 18. This good news is for all people to hear and receive. Let us pass the peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. I invite us to join our voices together once again as we sing hymn number 348. Mm -hmm.
to hear your holy words being read for us today. Lord, may your light shine through the darkness that clouds our judgment and inhibits our understanding. We trust that your words help help to nourish our souls daily, lifting us from complacency into faith-inspired action. We pray this in your name. Amen. Our responsive call to worship, our responsive worship, ah, responsive psalm. 12 years is hard to change. <laughs> I was doing so well, too. You'd think after like five, six, seven ish months. I apologize. So, a response of Psalm, Psalm 119, verses 17 to 24. Be good to your servant while I live, that I may obey your word. Open my eyes. I am a stranger on earth. Do not hide your commands from me. My soul is consumed with longing for your laws at all times. You rebuke the arrogant, you are acu- who are accused, those who stray from your commands. Remove from me the scorn and contempt, for I keep your statutes. Though rulers sit together and slander me, your servant will meditate on your decrees. Your statutes are mine. Amen. I'd like to invite Kathy to come and read the gospel reading today. Gospel reading this morning is from John chapter 9, verses 1 to 41. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? this man or his parents, that he was born blind. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the work of God might be, might be displayed in his life. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with his saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means scent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes open, they demanded. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. Where is this man, they asked him. I don't know, he said. They brought brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, How can a sinner do such miraculous signs? So they were divided. Finally, they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, He is a prophet. The Jews still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight 
until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son, they asked? Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that now he can see? We know he is our son, the parents answered, and we know he was born blind. But how can he see now? Or who opened his eyes? We don't know. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for already the Jews had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Christ would be, would be put out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said, he is of age, ask him. A second time they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God, they said. We know this man is a sinner. He replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. Then they asked him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I have told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Then they hurled insults at him and said, You are this fellow's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. The man answered, Now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes? We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly man who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, You were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Thanks be to God for this reading of his word. <clears throat> Thank you, Kathy. We're having all sorts of fun with this light today. And I think it's it. As we look at, at this section of, of the Gospel of John, as we continue on our, our journey through the Gospel of John, John we, is revealing to us a, an account of what happened um, in the ministry of Jesus, but also revealing some of the assumptions that people have and still actually do have. As we look at the very beginning, we have Jesus and the disciples seeing this man who had been born blind. And the question is, right off the bat by the disciples, who sinned, him or his parents? See, we have this assumption that if something isn't what we would define as normal, outside of our realm of acceptance of normal, or our definition of normal, we think that it is either good or bad. Now, depending on who you are, it depends on what you define as good and bad. Sometimes we have general uh, ideas and accepted ideas of what is good, Sometimes we have general ideas and accepted ideas of what is bad. And sometimes, depending on who you are, depends on whether you agree or not. And yet, in this very instance, there is that assumption that because this man was born blind, not able to see, that must be a result of sin. Sometimes we hear this in uh, other Christian circles that if you just had had faith, if you hadn't sinned, this wouldn't have happened. If we look at the book of Job, this is a... It's all through that book. Because you, all this stuff happened to Job, his friends say, you must have sinned. And Job's saying, what did I do? Too often we have jumped to the assumptions that aren't always founded. 
Jesus comes up with something that is, and says something that is troubling to our sense of fairness, to our sense of what is right and wrong, and he says neither. Neither this man or his parents have sinned, but that he was born blind. This happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. And we struggle with this. People think that this is completely unfair. Why should he have this, the, the, this difference? Some, would people, some people say disability. And in this era, in this time, it was more of a problem for the person and the family than it is today. It's still difficult, yes. We live in a world that, that many people can see, but many cannot, many struggle to see but we have ways of helping. And in this day and age, it was very difficult for someone to make a living, so they were having to go out and beg, asking others to help them. And Jesus said that this is so that God's glory could be seen through him. We wonder, we think that this seems to be a little bit unfair. That why would God do this to this person? And yet, when we think about it, when we think about who we are before God, we are all God's creations. We are all to display God's glory. We do that in many different ways. Sometimes it is through the gifts and blessings that God has given through us. Sometimes we are given the opportunity to allow others to show God's love and God's grace. We are all working together to display God's greatness, God's compassion, and God's love. But as one story I remember hearing about a, a young man who was poor and having to shine shoes, shine the shoes of a, a rich, rich young man, and the rich young man questioned this poor man's faith. He said, how can you believe in a God that God will provide for you? Look at you, you're having to or shine my shoes. And the, man, and the poor man says that he trusts that God will continue to provide. The problem is not on his end, but on the end of those God leads to help out others. How often do we hear God's prompting to help and we don't listen? Jesus then goes to the blind man. He spits in the ground, makes mud, and puts it on the blind man's eyes. And he says, go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And the man went and washed. And he came home seeing. It seems so simple. It seems almost actually insulting at times when you think about it. How many times would you want someone to go spit on some dirt, make some mud and put it on your eyes? This seems a little bit out of the ordinary, but this is an out of the ordinary situation. Too often we limit what God can do because it seems so simple. We can go back to the Old Testament and the prophet Elisha was given the opportunity to help a foreign military official, and the military official comes, and Naaman, and Elisha didn't even go out and greet him because he didn't want to have anything to do with him, really. But he says, go wash in the Jordan River seven times, and then the leprosy will go. Well, the military official was beside himself. How dare he tell me to go wash in this backwater creek? My words, not his words. There are much greater rivers to go wash in. And his, 
his assistant says to him, you know, if he'd asked you to do a great thing, a great accomplishment, a great task, you would do it no problem. All he's asking you to do is go wash in the Jordan River seven times. Why don't you try and see what happens? It seems so simple. It seemed mundane even. It wasn't a great spectacle of lights. It was something that people do quite frequently. The washing in the river, not necessarily the spitting saliva in the mud. And yet, Jesus does this and the man's sight is restored. How often do we look at the miracles of God and think that it can't be from God, it's too easy? How often are we putting our expectations of what God can do and should do out of context? Kind of like the disciples asking Jesus, who has sinned, this man or his parents, because he was blind? How often do we try to put what God should do and is doing in a box? And if it doesn't fit in that box, it can't be from God. Well, if we're like that, we're very much like the Pharisees that see this man who had been born blind and he goes and or he calls him, they call him to them and question him. They don't believe what that first off that he is the same man. And they don't believe that Jesus did this and it was from God. Now, these are very smart people. These are very rational people. But at times, when you hear the questions and the, 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 the comments that they have, it doesn't make sense themselves. Because you see this man who had been born blind giving credit to God and actually entering into worship and drawing closer to God because of what Jesus did. And here we have the Pharisees basically condemning Jesus as not being from God. And in some instances they give the argument that Jesus is from the devil, that Jesus is doing this by the power of the devil, and Jesus' response in those instances is quite interesting. Well, if the devil is doing this, and it's bringing people closer to God, it seems to have backfired. My words, not Jesus's, but along the same line. His words was, it becomes a house divided, that you're bringing people closer to God and you're actually doing your, yourself more damage. That if it is from Satan who is causing these problems, and then Satan's going to heal these problems, you're counteractor, counteracting what's going on, and it's like you're working against each other. You're butting heads. And this man is seeing a little bit more clearly what Jesus is doing and who Jesus is from. And he basically says, I don't know where he's from, but if I use my brain and the teaching that you guys have given me, that God doesn't listen to an unrighteous person. I know I couldn't see before, but now I can. So if, G if Jesus still, he doesn't know who Jesus is really or where he's from, but this makes more sense that if he is doing this and I'm able to see, I have this gift of sight, this is a blessing which the man is crediting God with, he must be righteous at the very least at the very least, he must be a righteous, faithful person of God. And yet, they still struggle. They still struggle hearing this. And this is the interesting, the interesting problem. We see at the very beginning the disciples having their idea of what sin looks like. And Jesus saying, maybe not. 
that just because there are things that we consider bad to happen to us aren't always bad. And when we're in those situations, are we willing to actually look for God in those situations? That poorly timed cold that we get that gives us the rest that we sorely need and won't take. It's inconvenient, but it probably saves us. Maybe, just maybe, God is looking out for us. The disciples had that trouble, and here we see the Pharisees having trouble also. They have put God in a box. They have their understanding of what God will do, of what people of God should be like. They have to approve them first. It doesn't matter if they come directly from God. If they are not Pharisee approved, they must not be from God. They have not gone, and uh, Jesus did not go and ask them to be part of their group, pay the initiation fees. I I say this, and I've seen movies where, from my past, um, I used to uh, watch a lot of martial arts movies. Um, Being said, I was also in karate at the time. But anyways, and I remember watching this one Ip Man movie. Um, Ip Man was the teacher of Bruce Lee, for those of you who don't know. Um, and he, would go, he went into this new town, and he was setting up a school, but the other martial arts teachers hadn't approved. So they wanted to test him. They basically wanted him to pay the money until they were to prove and essentially make sure that they weren't, because they didn't want anyone coming into their territory, really. I'm not saying that the Pharisees didn't want another rabbi in their territory, but it seems that they don't want to listen to what Jesus is saying. They don't even want to listen to what Jesus is doing. Because if we look at chapter 8, one of the things is, is that they won't believe what Jesus has said about himself. They won't believe the message that Jesus is giving. They won't trust that Jesus is from God. And even as he is lining up with the words of God, they're not listening. In, the, in chapter 8, we see that uh, the Pharisees are saying that they are children of Abraham. Here they are saying they are disciples of Moses following in the line of great leaders, of people of respect from the Jewish faith. And here they are struggling to hear what God is doing. They are struggling to recognize what Jesus is doing is from God. That what Jesus is doing is blessing God's people. Not taking away from God, not creating heretics, but allowing God to exp- or allowing people to experience God's love. And here we see that even in the light that Jesus is shining through his words and through his actions, through the miracles he does, people still struggle to see because it doesn't fit in their pre-described box. And sometimes we have to watch out because we do the same thing. There is a famous line in seminary. I'm sure most seminaries have heard it said. We haven't done it that way before. We laugh. And yet, what it's saying is, I'm unsure about what you're doing because I haven't seen that it will succeed. And not knowing is uncomfortable. The Pharisees are very comfortable in the knowledge that they have and what they know. And Jesus is making them a little bit uncomfortable. But it is showing a spiritual blindness a spiritual blindness that they are struggling with. 
a spiritual blindness that is quite evident that just because we think we know doesn't mean that we know everything. At the end of the chapter, Jesus heard that they had thrown the man out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, What are you? Are we blind too? Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim... It's always interesting when you copy something over and it doesn't actually... Copy over completely. That you, are, that you claim you can see you are guilty of sin. We struggle with this because what happens with our doubts? What happens with what we claim and what we experience? What happens when our faith is challenged to go a little bit deeper? We hear the word of God and we see what God has done in Jesus Christ. We see the miracles we claim and hold fast to the good news of Jesus Christ. But that means that it's not just about hearing. That hearing has to go to our minds, to our understanding, but also to transform our hearts that we are living and blessing others as Jesus has blessed us. That we are choosing to see God's hand at work in our lives, even when others have deemed it to be bad. That we are constantly looking for God and Jesus in our lives and listening to, that whole, to, the, to God's Holy Spirit in our lives so that we can be honoring and doing what God is calling us to do. That when God speaks, we are willing to go and to act and to speak the words that he gives us. See, Jesus didn't just heal and run away. He also welcomed him. He doesn't just leave the people that he, he has helped. He cares for them. He doesn't just call the disciples out of their daily tasks and out of their lives and sets them on a path by themselves. He walks with them. He challenges the disciples. But even in that, he hasn't com completely condemned them, that they are beyond hope. He shows where they need to, to grow and to, to work on, but he hasn't left them out in the cold by themselves. Jesus speaks into our lives his words of life, his words of healing. Sometimes they are words that we love to hear, and sometimes they are words that we struggle with that invite us to go a little bit deeper, to refine our lives a little bit more, and to trust him with more than what we were willing to trust him before. May we hear God's words. May we allow his light to shine on our lives, that we might see, that we might continue to grow in faith and trust. Amen. Announcements. Pardon? Bible study tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Uh, luncheon uh, Wednesday. Uh, I'm sure you guys are getting here. A pardon? 
But what time are you guys getting here? This evening, they're at St. Paul's in uh, Winchester. We're continuing to watch The Chosen. Uh, doors open around 6.30. We start watching a little bit after 7. So if you're interested in watching that, you're more than welcome to come. We're on started, We're in season one. We're on episode two tonight. Um, yes. God, we thank you. We thank you for your light that shines into our lives, that reveals the strengths that you have placed in us, but also reveals to us the places that we need to grow. Lord, we trust in your light to guide us, to guide our footsteps, to guide us as, the, as we walk down the path that you are leading. Lord, we trust in you. Lord, as we, as we live our lives, we we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit guiding us each and every day. Lord, at times we are, are lonely, we are, at times we are struggling, at times we know those who, who are feeling the, the darkness of despair. But Lord, your light shines and gives us hope. You remind us that we are not alone, that you are with us. And Heavenly Father, we lift up to you the Though many people who are recovering from surgery today. Lord, we pray for your continued help, your continued strengthening of their bodies, surrounding them with your love and you, with, your, with your healing. And Lord, we thank you for the people that you have brought around to help them, to support them in this journey. And Lord, we pray for those who are, who are grieving. Lord, we pray for the Pemberton family, and we pray that you would continue to to surround them with your comfort and with your peace. And Lord, we, we pray for, for peace in our world. Lord, there, there are many different places where we are struggling to find peace. Whether it's in our communities, whether it's in our countries, whether it's in far off countries that we've never visited but heard so much about. Lord, we pray for peace for families just like ours and for families that are completely different. Lord, we know how important each day and each moment is. Lord, grant us your peace that we might live in your fullness and in your grace. Help us, Lord, to, to work for that peace, to be ambassadors of your grace, to listen instead of jumping to conclusions to seek your goodness and your faithfulness instead of our own kingdoms. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. And we pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our mission moment this morning.
We really appreciate the program we, as we are in dire need to keep the education going for our kids. A shared grateful parent. For Afghan children who sought refuge in Pakistan, education is often out of reach because they are not nationals. pws and supports the Digital Learning Center in Peshawar, uh, which provides out-of-school children and adults with basic digital literacy classes, high school courses, and tutoring sessions that aim to help a total of 520 students. Students and their family members are benefiting from the direct cuts. A Dinesh uh, Library, which provides free and open educational resources on such topics as math, language, business, and the sciences. Students access classes both in English and Dari or Farsi, equipping them with essential skills and providing hope for those who have lost so much, broadening their opportunities for the future. The love of the Lord changes how we see the world around us and how we see our neighbors. In God we experience an abundance of blessing and we do not need to fear. May we give our tithes and offerings as God has blessed you.
Send us, Lord, with your light shining through all we do. Send us with your grace to show people the difference that you make in people's lives. Send us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name.